Welcome back to the Hammered Ham. It's been a while, hasn't it? Well, I haven't had the opportunity to run a classic transmitter, but now that we have the navigator running, we're going to do it on this episode of the Hammered Ham. Isn't that great? All right, here's the lineup tonight, guys. We have a Johnson Navigator. This is the one that you saw me struggling with the other night. I finally got her dialed in. It turned out to be a mechanical problem, not an electronic problem. So she's putting out full power. I've got it set up for 40 meter band on my favorite frequency, 7.115. For the receiver, I have my all-time classic National 300. I've got a ham keyer up there because I'm kind of a lousy sender with a straight key and a beautiful vibroplex. So let's send out a CQ on 40 meters and see who comes back to the hammered ham. All right, so I was getting ready to send and lo and behold, somebody is on my frequency. or pretty close. And three F E S and three F E S. And he just sent a K, which means anybody call me, all right? So I'm not on his frequency, so let's get there. Right about there, see what we get. Oop, better get some side tone going. Okay. All right, let's try it again. That's a little fast, isn't it? Slow it down, because he's slow. I don't want to scare him away. That's his call. Now, mine. like that plate meter slamming. Let's see if we get him. Alright, there's somebody else sitting there on my frequency stalking me. Let's see what we got going here. This is my frequency at this point. So I just sent a QRL, wondering if the frequency is in use. No. All right, here we go. Electronic fishing. The band isn't that great. But you heard how weak that guy was and he could still hear the navigator. And I don't know how much power he was putting out, but we're only putting out like 20 watts. So that's great. And I have a um, ground mounted vertical outside with no tuner. So excellent. Let's do it again. Somebody's tuning. So here's a tech tip for you guys. <clears throat> if you have one of these navigators and you're missing those little pointers on the back of the knobs, you may think you're doomed, but if you get on, it's a Deutsch connector site, they make little plugs that go on the back of like membranes of connectors for unused pins. That's what those are. I buy those up, clip them off, Stick them in there, look just like new, and they fit. You don't have to do any modifications. They just pop right in. Pretty cool, huh? All right, somebody's tuning up. Let's make some noise.
right there. C4I. Nice signal. So when I was in the Air Force, I did a lot of CW. I had a little Johnson Ranger. And I worked the world. I was on a nuke base and I actually talked to a guy in Russia. <laughs> that didn't go over so well with the Air Force guys. But, uh, you know, I found that you don't need a lot of power. You just need to get out there and excite the airwaves. And that's what we're going to do right now with our big 20 watts. Now keep in mind, up here on 7.115, there's usually not a lot of activity. Most of the activity is on the bottom of the band, but those guys are going like 10,000 miles an hour. And if you're sitting here drinking wine, you can't talk to them because everything will become a blur. Okay. There's something there. All right, let's try it again. So when I'm transmitting, you can't hear the signal, but if I leave it in this mode and simply hit the key, you'll hear it in the receiver. Okay, so I got the volume all the way down. So now you'll hear the signal that the VFO is outputting. So you see the note has a nice sharp attack. It's not going boop, boop, you know, so there's not power supply issues. I bet you this thing sounds great on the air. Ooh, got some of that computer stuff moving in on me. Isn't the Navigator just a gorgeous transmitter? I just love the little pinstripes and the retro look they did. The only thing I don't like is that meter. Why would you design such a beautiful transmitter and put this junk meter in it? Come on, Johnson. What'd you save, a buck? All right, here we go. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Even though this is a low-power transmitter, I find that I get more action with lower-power units than I do, say, a 200-watt CW rig. Maybe it's because people are hearing that unique signature of CW and they're interested, right? Rather than hearing a generic uh, cookie cutter signal like everybody else, they can detect when there's a tube break on. It's coming in much better. Somebody just jumped on my frequency, blasted me out, so we're going to slide up. Somewhere around there. So now my dog is over there eating his food, so you might hear some terrible slopping noises. Let's see what we got.
I wish I could eat like him. I'm sure the family would be impressed. Whoa! Like that. You know, I just noticed the greens and the burgundy match the navigator. Maybe I should start making navigator wine glasses. Come on, people, where you at? All right, well, that's a wrap for the Hambered Ham. The band is just not cooperating. It's been pretty bad lately. I was lucky to make the QSOs that I did. So I guess Robert Mondavi and I are going to have to move on to some other missions. But the good news is the Navigator is performing excellent. And the owner is going to absolutely love that vintage piece. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Hammered Ham.